Absolutely thrilled, excited, and humbled to welcome back to our stage Miss Janice Ian. I hope I'm worth it. They herded us like so much meat Up from the sewers to the street Where concrete canyons stretch their walls So high it made us want to crawl Past proverbs writ on subway cars and in between the window bars We walked until that pavement bled And not a curse was left unsaid Searching for America In the rivets and the rust Searching for America Finding only dust well, They gave us each a cropper shack And then so hard it broke the back then they fed us till our bellies burst On promises that died at birth So I lay the baby out each dawn In between the tender corn Blue sky for her bonnets Flies are only blankets We harvested until we bled And every single root ran red And when the work was finally done They gave our names to immigration Searching for America In the rivers and the coasts Searching for America Finding only ghosts people you've seen to dream this dark and distant dream to tell the stories you have told and leave these bruises on your soul they are the flesh they are the bones they are the very cornerstone 
They leave their mansions and their shacks To hide here in between the cracks We walk when we can run no more And wash up on some distant shore But truth is not the enemy And whatever does not kill us sets us free Somewhere out there A million's just like me We are homesick for Eden Heartsick at the memory We're searching for America In every stick and stone Searching for America Going home Searching for America Going Thank you and a good evening to you. Good to be here. Amazing night for all of us with you. Thank you. What an amazing audience. They are. They were great. They're, They're absolutely great. wonderful. When you say that, what what comes to mind when you say that? They didn't throw anything. That was good. <laughs> um, they were attentive, but they were responsive. You know, sometimes you get an audience a little bit dead. They're very attentive, but they don't respond. Right. And it's a two-way street, that feedback between the performer and the audience. It goes both ways. I don't think audiences realize just how much they affect the show, especially when it's an intimate show like mine in an intimate surrounding. If the audience isn't alive, I guess would be the word, mm -hmm. um, then I spend most of the show trying to wake them up as opposed to doing my job, which is to communicate and sing. Yeah. So nights like tonight are just a pleasure. <laughs> Well, I've just done 21 shows with Tom Paxton, uh, and the second most frequently asked question was, how do you want to be remembered? <laughs> so now I'm seeing all of these cameras and videos, and I'm thinking, wow, am I that close? It's a miracle of nature Just to be alive tonight Awake in your arms The world and its charms Lit up by candlelight It's a miracle of feeling To love despite the fear so please don't forget I've had no regrets Since you found me here Cause through the years We've been happy Through the years We've been sad And sometimes Feeling lucky Was the only But we always found some laughter in the tears Through the years It's a never-ending wonder That other arms are cold when every night I'm warmed by the light of your spin thrift soul, 
and it's shining like a beacon lit up beyond the dark what do people do when they don't have you alive in their hearts cause through the years we've been happy through the years we've been sad and sometimes feeling lucky was the only luck we had but we always found some laughter in the tears What do people do when they don't have you to lighten their fears? Through the years, through the years, through the years. Would you like to learn to sing? Would you like to sing my song? Would you like to learn to love me best of all? Cause anyone can learn the words and the melody is so plain. This is my song to bring you back again I can teach you how to sing and dance with a song and dance routine and when the party's over you can fall in love with me would you like to learn to tango Do you dance the light fandango I'll teach you how before we're done Cause anyone can make it too And any two can turn to one In the melody's lost before the song's begun Where we sound so good together And so poorly sung alone Your harmonies and open breeze Into my sheltered I can teach you how to sing and dance with a song and dance routine. And when my party's over, you can fall in love with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. So far, so good. <laughs>
the beauty of your guitar, I mean, your, the sound, the actual sound coming off of it, every guitar player that was in the room tonight, <laughs> and, and Lloyd Baggs also. Yeah, I love Lloyd. Yeah, and I mean... They well, just, part of the sound is Lloyd, because the only thing that the guitar is, it's going through some pedals, but basically they're, they're only on a couple of times. The basic guitar is an, uh, it's a Santa Cruz Genesee in model, which we made the first one in 90 one I think when everybody laughed at us saying nobody wants small guitars and we went okay fine but we're building some and then and they uh, sound so big they sound huge and then it's got an LB6X pickup underneath the saddle and what I said to Richard Hoover at Santa Cruz was <laughs> I want a Les Paul neck with Gibson jumbo frets in a tiny body with a neck small enough for me with a cutaway so that I can hit that 14th and 16th fret without a problem and I want it to sound like a D18 and so then Lloyd came up with the microdrive, and I put that underneath, and the black, the first one that I started with, that's 20 years old now, or a little bit older. The, the blonde is only three years old, so it's still moving a lot and still a little confused by weather changes. But they've both got Lloyd's microdrives in them. And then outside of the microdrive and a DI box, that's it. There's like, there's no fancy um, parametrics, there's no fancy equalizers on them. No yeah. graphics. They're just flat. There's that one thing, though, that's on them, and that's that beautiful touch. Well, it's in, <laughs> a lot of it's in the fingers at this point. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But, that you know, I used to sit around with Chet Atkins and watch him play, and so much of what he did was just in his fingers. And he could make a crap guitar sound amazing. Yeah. And it, it's just sometimes you take a little leap as a player or a singer or a writer. You, you just suddenly you jump from here to there, and you don't know how or why. And I did that with guitar about eight years ago. Suddenly, one day, I was playing differently. Well, as I said, I, I've been out with Tom Paxton for the last 21 dates, so it's, it's very strange to be up here alone. I keep trying to find the person whose shadow is obscuring me. <laughs> one of the cool things about it was that I got to tell stories on Tom. Um, I first met him, I was 13 years old. I hadn't written this next song yet. That was about six months later, but... I got invited in New York City to sing at a hootenanny, which is shorthand for you don't get paid. <laughs> and so my parents drove me into New York to the village gate and I got, to, uh, I got to be on stage. They would line you up just in case you decided to leave early. And I got to be on stage sandwiched between Len Chandler and Tom Paxton. And then on stage with us were Lou Gossett Jr. and Buffy St. Marie and Eric Anderson and Phil Oaks and just just a host of amazing artists. And um, I grew up on a farm. I hadn't been to many concerts. So I didn't really know anything about encores. So I got up and I did my little song and then I raced back to my seat because I was worried that people would get annoyed with me for taking too much time. And the first words I ever heard out of Tom Paxton's mouth were, go back you idiot, you got an encore. It was the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> you come to my door, baby. Your face is clean and shining black as night. My mama went to answer, you know, that you looked so fine. Now I could understand the tears and the shame She called you boy instead of your name When she wouldn't let you inside When she turned and said, but honey, he's not our kind She said, I can't see Walk me down to school, baby Everybody's acting deaf and blind Until they turn and say Why don't you just Stick to your own kind My teachers all laugh Their smirking stares 
Cutting deep down in our affairs Reaches of equality Think they believe it, then why won't they just let us be? They say I can't see One of these days I'm gonna stop my listening I'm gonna raise my head up high One of these days I'm gonna raise up my glistening wings and fly But that day will have to wait for a while Baby, I'm only society's child when we're older, things may change But for now, this is the way they must remain I say I can't see you anymore, baby I can't see you anymore no, I don't want to see you anymore, baby. A little more monitor level, please. I'm leaving my nights, I'm leaving alone, leaving you lie when you wake and I'll be gone. I would not beg for me Yes, I could not beg for you Oh, I'd like to be the one to see you through Every step you have taken Disappears with the tide You're torn up and shaken With changing your mind You haven't got the grace to see you finally decide And you haven't got the strength to stay to fight Those people who surround you only Want to see you weak enough to crawl They'll lie for you, they decide for you And buy up all your rights and all your wrongs and they'll try and stop your singing In the middle of your song They do not want you free They will not make you strong But whom they drag you down In the hole they're coming from They say you are foolish For wanting the sun they call you selfish for learning to run They'll tell you that the darkness is a blessing in disguise You never have to notice if you're sighted or you're blind And they'll do their best to keep you from the light You're more than beginning You're learning to fly It feels like you're falling But it passes in time And I hate to see a friend go down in flames Without a song 
So I'm waiting by the doorway. I will not linger long. I'm leaving my night. I'm leaving alone. And I'm leaving you alive. When you wake and I'll be gone. I would not beg for me. Yes, I could not beg for you. But I'd like to be the one to see ya. Thank you. My mother loved jazz. She grew up in the Bronx in New York. And she lived in a walk-up, fourth floor. And on a Saturday night, my grandmother would come and tuck her into bed. And then my uncle would creep into the room and they would open the window and they would climb down the fire escape. And they would take the train to Harlem and they would dance all night long to Dizzy Gillespie and Louis Armstrong and Billy Eckstein, all the greats. And so it was a big thing for her when I became able to bring her backstage with me. And she could be on a first name basis with all the ladies, with Nina and Sarah and Ella. And I remember her telling them how she worried for me because she felt like I had picked a hard path. I have a vivid memory of Odetta patting her on the hand and saying, she'll be all right, Pearl. Don't worry about her, she'll be all right. My mother never quite believed it. <laughs> I think honestly because she had seen too many times what a quick fall it could be from the big concert halls to the small and from the small concert halls to the clubs and from the clubs to the bars and from the bars to the saloons, and from the saloons to who knows where. <laughs> Places with animals on the walls. Bright lights and promises A pocket full of dreams That's what they paid me to be Honey, would you sing it just for me? When I was good Then I was bad I never thought I'd end up this way With no dreams to hide me bright lights to guide me how long does it take to make the great everywhere I hear ringing Honey, let the music play Give me small-town blues Make it loud, make it do Listen to my music sway You 
got barrels and cocktails Have you got a light? Ain't that what it pays to keep in sight? Overused and much abused promises of delight. Honey, would you care to spend the night? Till on I see them reaching out for me. So play that old time melody. Bright lights and promises That's all it's for You're leaving into by the service door I am gold me diamonds Even if my gold is worn Honey, who could ask for more? But when you were telling the story about your mom being all too aware mm. of from club to concert to club and then to bar and, and, and then knows. down yeah yeah well she had watched it she had watched it too many times and she was very aware of the pitfalls especially for a woman I mean there's really no map for us at this point Ella started a map and Sarah Vaughn started a map Baez is mapping but all of us are mapping it right now you know re records are pretty recent 
the only map until now was really the Bessie Smith. Um, I mean, so many of that has been written out of the history books. Rosetta Tharp was written out, and Victoria Spivey was written out. So you have Bessie Smith, and you have Ma Rainey before her, and then you have Billie Holiday, and uh, all living tragic lives, dying tragic deaths, and that's what's supposed to happen if you're a female performer. You're supposed to be piaf and, and be tremendously unhappy and living in heartbreak and then singing about it bravely. You know, no offense, but fuck that. Right, right on. So um, we're, all, we're all mapping it out now because there's no, real, there's no real guide for getting old in the entertainment industry. So I was at home a few years ago, and I got a call from Joan Baez's manager, Mark Spector. And he said, would you like to open for Joan on the West Coast next month? I said, hell yeah. I first met Joan Baez when I was 16 years old, and I was at Newport Folk Festival, and I was about to be attacked by a group of folk people. <laughs> and she saved me. So I'm forever indebted. So I say to my partner, Pat, I say, Pat, Pat, guess what? I'm going to open for Joan Baez. Is this cool or what? Probably we'll have a really deep conversation before the show. And she said, wow, oh, that's great, honey. You do know that Joan is very political. And I said, yes, yeah, she's Joan Baez. Of course she's political. And Pat said, well, she probably keeps up with the news on a daily basis. And I said, yeah, of course she does. She's Joan Baez. She's political. And Pat said, on the other hand, you get the news on a need-to-know basis. What will you talk about with her? I said, oh, God, I'm going to look like an idiot in front of Joan Baez. So I start cramming, right? I'm cramming with the news. I borrow Pat's iPad. I have my phone set to CNN. I'm watching every possible station, every TV in the house, and all surrounding houses are, is on. I have my computer set so that when I log on, it opens up to eight different news channels. I'm desperately absorbing the situation in the Middle East, the problems with the Japanese yen, what is going on in Liberia now, and why is Canada so Canadian? <laughs> and so, at the end of a month, I'm feeling very confident. I'm feeling good about this. I think, okay, Joan and I, we're gonna get deep. Probably we'll talk about these things. We'll talk about world peace, and hunger, and solving these issues. We'll have a big, deep conversation. So I go out to the West Coast. I'm in my dressing room. I'm rehearsing statistics. <laughs> the knock comes at the door. Miss Baez will see you. I go to Joan's dressing room. Kiss, kiss, hug, hug. How are you? It's been a few years. How are you? It's been a few years. I say, I'm fine. She says, I'm fine. We sit down. She says, how are you really? And I say, you know, to be really honest, I, I hit my 60s, it's weird. And Joan says, yeah, I hit my 70s, it's weird. And I say, yeah, it's, it's very odd. I don't quite understand what's happening with my body. And Joan says, well, I have to wear these high neck scarves now because this thing is happening with my neck. And I say, well, I can't wear eye makeup anymore. And she says, well, why not? And I say, because you know how you pull your eye and you put the liner on and then you let go? It's all supposed to snap right back. And instead, I look like a Picasso. And she says, well, I've had to drop a lot of my keys. And I say, well, I've dropped several things as well. I've dropped things I had no idea they were even being held up. And yet, there they are. We go on in this vein for about 20 minutes. And at the end, I say, thank you. And she says, thank you. And I go outside, and I'm standing there, and I think, dang, that was so deep. So I'm on stage later on, I'm singing my heart out. You have to understand, for someone like me, to be able to work with someone like Joan, well, Joan, it, it's huge. It's still a thrill. I mean, I grew up listening to her, which I'm sure she wouldn't appreciate my saying. I learned to play guitar from her records in Odetta's. She has always been exemplary to me. She has always been everything that you would want Joan Baez to be. And people like that, for someone like me, are a continuous education of how we want to be. So it, it's extraordinary for me when I get to work with someone like Joan. So I'm standing up on stage, I'm singing my little heart out, and I'm thinking how lucky I am. And I look over into the wings, and there's Joan, sitting on a straight-back chair, 
There's nobody around. Her hands are folded in her lap. Her head is bowed. She's singing along. And she knows every word of the song. And I think to myself, oh my god, this is a highlight of my life. Joan Baez knows my song. And then I remembered she had recorded it. I hear your voice in every corridor. See your face in every picture frame. I feel your eyes in every starry sky. Lover, am I coming home again? Now am I humble, who once was proud? Now am I silent, who once was loud? Now am I waiting for the sound of your singing? Lover, am I When you're gone, the sun don't shine. Light a light, light a light for me. And bring me back home again. And how we loved till the years were days. How we laughed all our tears away now the time begins to fade lover am I coming home again there's a wisdom in the teachings of the old familiar songs and a sorrow in believing all the old familiar wrongs and a lesson to be learned though I've known all along lover am I coming home again light a light light a light for me light a light light a light for Light a light, light a light for me And bring me back home again Bring me back home again Well, I think artists have more, in, artists like myself have more in common with magicians than we do with most other fields, because it's the same thing. It's the synthesis of um, hopes and dreams and wishes with reality. Really, we're, we're going to get into some major metaphysical stuff here, but um, you know, if you take the, the mundane of here's a guitar, here's six strings, here's a human being, and then you press that guitar against a chest so that it resonates from the chest up through the throat and out of the voice, then you're making magic. Yeah. You know, then there's nothing in the air and then suddenly there is. It's astonishing. Yeah. Yeah. And alchemy. I mean alchemy was all about the transmutation of, of lead into gold. Well what do you call it when you take nothing or you take something horrible and you turn that into a, a, a song of longing that people can cling to with hope, you know, to give hope. That's astonishing. Yeah. Yeah. We call it alchemy too, and so when you do, you really yes. Oh, see, you're the first people I've met. No, that's, that's cool. We do um, kismet. Yeah. So when you said that, it was all of a sudden ding, 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 ding. That's cool. Yeah. So it was that when Arlo Guthrie's sister Nora, Woody's daughter, called me and said, because she knew my mom, and she said, um, I have a lyric that Woody never finished, and I'm wondering if you would want to finish it, and I said no. 
I want to go down in history as the singer-songwriter who destroyed an unfinished Woody Guthrie song. <laughs> she said, well, take a look. I'm going to send it to you anyway. And I opened up the mail, and there was the lyric. And a miracle happened, because normally songs, when I write them, take a long time. I looked at the lyric. Melody popped into my head. By the time I got back to the car, I had the start of the second verse. By the time I got home, I had the chorus. And by the next morning, the song was done, which says to me that it should have been done. If I could only hear my mother sing again if I could close my eyes and hear your voice as then All the friends and family would sing along with me And they would set your spirit free In my heart I hear you sing again And every note's as natural as then When I sing those songs For family and friends In my heart I hear again I know the troubled times that turned your hair to gray and all the tears and sorrows followed to your grave but deep within the heart of hunger there were always melodies that were passed from you to me In my heart I hear you sing again And every note's as natural as then When I sing those songs with family and friends In my heart I hear your voice again In my heart I hear you sing again When Woody's daughter Nora called me about that lyric, she actually sent about 15 lyrics, and that was on the very bottom. And I was going through the 15, and each one I was thinking, this is so dated, I don't know how to make it work now. This is about something I can't relate to. This is, And I had done a bunch of homework. I had read up the biographies and his autobiography, Bound for Glory, again. Um, and there were a lot of similarities. His mother was ill, my mother was ill. Um, she gave him music and his instruments. My mom did that with me. And yet there was a disconnect because of the times. But that lyric was on the very bottom, and it was Mother Sing Again. And the opening line was, if I could only hear my mother sing again, if I could close my eyes and hear your voices then. Uh. And I was like, oh. And that was one of the miracle moments because the melody popped into my head, and I wrote it in a day. And then I called Nora, and I'm the only writer I'm aware of with a Woody Guthrie song who has by Woody Guthrie and Janice Ian instead of lyrics by and music by right. because I said this is really integrated and Arlo sings it at all his shows now which I think is the biggest compliment I could get. Two years ago I was up for a Grammy for my uh, autobiography which is this yes thank you this the story of my life written by me about me I love that about myself and so my competition was pretty stunning. Uh, it was Ellen DeGeneres, Rachel Maddow, 
former President Bill Clinton and um, Michelle Obama. And so, you know, of course, I, I just assumed that I was going to lose. And so I won, which was really astonishing. How, how has this, like, pre-Grammy and post-Grammy, has that changed? How has that changed? Oh, yeah. Grammy changed everything. It opens up a bunch of new doors? Or? It opens up doors. It opens up, obviously, more doors if you're on the prime telecast, like I was with At 17. Um, it's national press, which is really difficult to get for me, or for anybody like me. Um, when you say like me? Well, I think um, folk music in general, solo performers in general, uh, older performers in general. Yeah. So all of a sudden the Grammy is a hook to hang the press on. And it's an interesting hook. You know, it's, it's a sexy hook. Right. So the Grammy changes that. Grammy excites promoters because they can use that as a Grammy winner this year. Um, it's a shot in the arm emotionally because it says, oh my God, my colleagues are actually listening. It's a shot in the arm uh, spiritually because I, I really believe that if you're on the right path, then things fall into place. It's when you deviate from that path for whatever reason that things start going south. So. It feels like I was on the right path when I said yes to the audiobook, even though it didn't pay enough to cover my hotel and my car. Um, for that week, it was the right thing to do. Right. You know? Um, and it also said a lot, I think, about my colleagues, people like Chick Corea that I ran into there, um, or Greg Field, that they were aware of the audiobook. Mm -hmm. So, a huge shot in the arm, the Grammy. Fantastic. Makes you feel like you're doing something right, you know, and, and I mean, I've lost, I think, seven or six. So I know how to lose them gracefully, but it, nobody was more surprised than me that I won. The joy of doing dates with someone like Tom, or another performer for that matter, is that there's a common thread that runs through most singer-songwriters. We're, we're pretty philosophical. We tend to take things very seriously, probably way too seriously for our friends and family. I know I make Pat crazy. She occasionally turns to me and says, I just asked what time it is. I don't need to know how to make a watch. <laughs> yes, anyone who lives with an artist knows that, right? Yes. But I think that it's what we do. Pat, as an attorney, when she has to explain something to a client, she takes something this big and she makes it this small so that you can understand it. And my job is to take something this small and make it huge. So if you ask me to uncork a bottle of wine, I start thinking about cork and where it came from. And <laughs> did the ancient Greeks have it or did they just have wax? And where is most of it harvested? And are they really changing it to plastic at this point or are they going to stay with cork? And before you know it, I'm back in ancient Greece, okay? So, so it's a joy to be with other artists because you all know where you're going and you just let each other ride with it. But the other joy of it is that people like me and Tom and Robin Bullock, who was our sideman for the tour, we really believe that art changes lives. We really believe that art is sometimes all that stands between us and chaos and we we so believe in what we do and that it has value beyond the moment. Because that's the wonderful thing about songs, they're invisible. It's the only art form that you can't touch or stop and see. And they go into the heart and they go into the body and they go into the soul. And they're there then five, 10, 20 years later when we need them most. And we've forgotten all about them. Suddenly they come to mind or you hear something that you heard at an important moment and it flips you right back to that moment and all those feelings for, for good and for bad, we are the keepers of people's memories and their dreams. And it's a noble, wonderful profession. And people like Tom and me walk on stage every night going, am I so lucky to be doing this? The audience has no idea how lucky I am because to be honest, we started doing it because it was what we loved. And we did it for years without money. And we would still do it without money, although please don't tell the club owners that. <laughs> because it gets into the bones, you know. And we all stand on the bones of those who came before. 
I stand on the bones of Billie Holiday and Nina Simone and Odetta and Dave Van Ronk and everybody who was ever good to me or taught me anything to do with my work. And when you stand on a high enough pile of bones, you can see pretty far. And you wind up being astonished that once in a great while, you get to write something that reaches almost as far as your eyes can see. And you get to cling to that and hold it in your heart in the moments when you despair. And remember that once, you were part of a miracle. I learned the truth at 17 That love was meant for beauty queens And high school girls with clear skin smiles Who married young men retired The Valentines I never knew The Friday night charades of youth were spent on one more beautiful At seventeen I learned the truth And those of us with ravaged faces Lacking in the social graces Desperately remained at home Inventing lovers on the phone who called to say, come dance with me And murmured vague obscenities It isn't all it seems At seventeen A brown-eyed girl in handy downs Whose name I never could pronounce Said, pity please, the ones who serve Cause they only get what they deserve In the rich relation hometown queen Marries into what she needs With a guarantee of company And even for the elderly sought to gain in debentures of quality and dubious integrity their small town eyes will gape at you in dull surprise when payment due exceeds accounts received at 17 To those of us who knew the pain Of valentines that never came and Those whose names were never called When choosing sides for basketball It was long ago and far away The world was younger than today when dreams were all they gave for free To ugly duckling girls like me We all play the game and when we dare We cheat ourselves, it's solitaire Inventing lovers on the phone Repenting other lives unknown Call and say, come dance with me And murmur vague obscenities At ugly girls like me At seventeen Thank you so much.
So, you know, I always think that I started writing songs when I was 12. It should be easy by now. They should just float out of me. I should sit down and go, I want to write about this, and bang, there they are. And yet it gets harder because the, the it's standard is higher. A lot more discriminating. And also aware of, I mean, I now have a body of work. When I didn't have a body of work and I wasn't competing with Jesse and at 17 in some people's lives, it was very different. But now I'm competing against myself in addition to Leonard Cohen and everybody else that I admire. So if I get a call from somebody like Dave Grusin and they say, we would like you to rip this piece apart and make a song out of it, and it's like, well, shoot, how, how do you live up to Dave Grusin? You know, how do you live up to Johnny Mercer? So you become aware of all of those. a little less guitar, Roger, because now I'm going to flail away. See these lines on my face? They are a map of where I've been. And the deeper they are traced, the deeper life has settled in. How do we survive? Living out our lives And I would not trade a line Make it smooth and fine Or pretend that time stands still I want to rest my soul Here where it can grow without fear Another line, another year still standing here See these marks on my skin They are the lyric of my life Every story I begin Just means another ends in sight Only lovers understand Skin just covers who I am And I would not trade a line Make it smooth and fine Or pretend that time stands still I want to rest my soul Here it can grow without fear Another line, another year still standing here See these bruises See these scars Hieroglyphs that tell the tale You can read them in the dark Through your fingertips like braille And I would not trade a line Make it smooth and fine Or pretend that time stands still I want to rest my soul Here it can grow without fear Another line, another year I'm still standing here Still standing here. We're still standing here. Thank you. This is, a, this is a great way to come back to doing solo shows. Thank you.
Um, I love this song. If you know it, please sing along with it. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around When every cloud darkens up that skyway There's a rainbow highway to be found Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby Somewhere over the rainbow Skies are blue And Dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the world is far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops are way above the chimney tops that's where you find me somewhere over the rainbow birds Birds fly over the rainbow Why then, oh, why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why?